Hey friends, welcome to a snowy Wednesday here in Colorado. It's actually a snow day, so my kids and husband are home. Um, although some of them have gone um, sledding on the sledding hill and some of them are here. So if you hear background noise, there are a few more people around than normal. Um, but we, I am excited to be here today and so with you guys and hopefully um, we can make a fun project. So today um, I am going to be changing up one of my husband's old sweaters to a top for my daughter and I also made her a pair of pants from one of his other sweaters yesterday. So I was just going to show you that and then um, work on, yeah, making up um, this sweater. I'm thinking it's gonna be like a tunic when I'm done, not quite a dress, but I've got the pieces cut out and I'll show you um, here in a minute. Um, but it's looking, I think it has pretty cute potential. So anyway, it is uh, snowy here and we got quite a bit of snow over last night. So like I said, um, my kids are actually home um, for the day. It's a snow day and my husband works at school, so he's home too. Um, so we're kind of cozying in and some went sledding and some are um, here, but we are going to sew and hopefully the internet and everything is good with the weather um, so that we can create something fun. So, all right, so I have shared in the past and I've actually put the link in the description of this video, some fun ideas for recycling slash upcycling um, sweaters to be kids clothes. I've made a tunic, I've made sweaters from sweaters, and one of my very favorite projects always is um, making pants from the sleeves of my husband's sweater for my daughter. And I did um, do it again yesterday, but I'm realizing this is the end. She is too tall for sleeves to become legs. Um, and I had to use a bit of the shoulder to make it happen. But look at how cute these little sweater pants are. And you can see, can you see here, I did have to use a bit of the shoulder seam. Whereas before, I was able to end it before the shoulder, so we didn't get any of the shoulder seam in. But I used a different waistband. The original sleeve cuffs become the ankles. And this is just so cozy and comfy, and I wish I could have a pair of sweater pants like this, but they don't make sweaters big enough uh, for me to do this. But so, this is a great project from tiny all the way through, my daughter's about an eight, seven, eight, now and we have reached the end of a sleeve length um, for her to have pants made out of it. So you can um, check out more information about making pants from sweater sleeves in the link in the description of this video. Um, and then I'm also going to be talking about um, upcycling sweaters today. So let's take a look at what I cut out for today's project. So earlier this year, my husband gave me a couple of sweaters that he was finished with. So we're going to I've already cut this out, but we're just gonna talk about how what I cut up to use for each of these pieces. So this right here is the bottom of the sweater, okay? So we're gonna keep this original bottom as the bottom of this tunic. And then I cut off the neckband. I'm gonna to try to reuse the original um, sweater neckband, and that this is that's kind of a first for me, because usually I don't. So I use the kids' raglan sweatshirt, or kids' raglan, uh, t-shirt pattern for this and I've cut the front and back but as you can see I've cut it short so my side seams are just about four inches so the plan and then I cut this from the front and back of the sweater so you can see bottom of the sweater top of the sweater I cut off the neck band here and then the sleeves I cut using the raglan um, shirt I'm leaving the original cuff on I cut the raglan top I did the underarm um, seam, I did cut off a little bit. We're gonna have to re-sew that. So this is actually cut open. Um, just because otherwise it was as wide as a men's sweater. And my daughter does not have arms as big as my husband's. So we've got two sleeves. They're kind of already formed, but we are going to have to re-sew up the side seam a little bit 
on that under sleeve, okay? And then I'm, for the neck, like I said, I've never reused the sweater neck band. I used almost, uh, almost always just put like a rib knit or something on it, but I cut it with a little bit of a seam allowance and I'm hoping I can just use that to sew back on and then we'll have to obviously adjust the length, but that we can keep this original sweater and then that would look really cute on the neck band, okay? So my plan is to sew up this shirt and then to gather the bottom of this sweater to match the width of the shirt and then have like a little gathered bottom on the raglan top. So that's what we're gonna be creating. I think I can do almost all this on the serger because we're keeping the original bottom hem on the sweater. We are keeping the original bottom cuffs on the sleeves and then we're gonna sew it together. So who's excited for that fun sewing project? I think this is gonna look really cute. Um, my daughter is a little questionable because it's blue. She, she said, I don't know if I like the color, but uh, I think once it's done, I mean, her wardrobe is full of a variety of colors of things. It's not like she only wears pink. So I'm excited and I think that this will um, be really good for her. So sorry, like I said last week, I'm still, I've kind of rearranged my sewing room. And so I'm still trying to figure out what is the best way to get me on the video, to get my machine on the video. And um, so you guys can see everything. So um, let's talk about what we're gonna start with. So um, usually I start with the sleeves on to the um, sweater. Okay, so you can see that the front neckline is cut a little bit lower than the back. Okay, so we'll start there. And um, because these sleeves are cut with the bottom open a little bit, we can go ahead and line those up. So with right sides together, I'm gonna put one of the shoulder seams from the sleeve and then line it up with the shoulder of the top. Okay, and we'll put a couple clips on there. And then we'll take the other sleeve and we'll do the same thing. So right sides together. We are going to attach up at the neck. And down to the underarm. And then we'll sew those in place. Okay, so like I said, this neckband, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna put it in. The seam is here. It will definitely need to be cut smaller. So maybe I'll just cut it open right now and cut off the original seam. I mean, this was made on a probably a knitting machine, so, um, you know, it's not the same as being sewn on, but I think I can reuse it. So, all right, so let's go ahead and sew the two arms in place. Find my presser foot here. And um, this sweater, I just simply cut it apart. It's an old navy sweater that my husband wore for several years and decided he was finished with. Um, so it's a nice tight weave, you know, which means, you know, it's not very loose. It's not fraying or coming apart when I cut it, but you just do need to be aware that, um, you know, this is a woven fabric and um, you need to take either a big, I, you know, kind of, I don't take a big seam allowance, but I do make sure that I'm um, taking a chunk of the good fabric and if anything is frayed or loose on there, I am, um, you know, taking into the good fabric. So keep that in mind. And if you don't have a serger, you will wanna make sure that you use a stretch stitch and like a tight zigzag or something to make sure that you also um, keep the fabric from continuing to fray, okay? So here is the front of the top, okay? So you can kind of see it coming together, the sleeves on there. And these cuffs are still together. I did not cut the cuffs. So, you know, right now the sleeve looks a little bit wonky, but we're gonna go ahead and be able to um, fill it in a minute. So what I'm gonna do before I put the neckband on is I'm gonna sew 
the shoulder seam of the back on one side. So for this, I'm gonna keep the neckline open in a line and not sew it in a circle. I think that will be easier for me to get the tension right on um, this neckband that I'm trying to reuse. Speaking of neck bands, um, you know, you can see this is a sweatshirt that I made and you can see how this one does stick up a little bit. And it's because this sweatshirt fabric hardly has any stretch. So it doesn't really work great for neck bands, but I've decided I'm kind of okay with it sticking up a little bit because it's so soft and cute and I didn't have anything really great for coordinating. So just know that if your fabric doesn't have a lot of stretch, I stretched it about as much as I could and this is what I get. So. Um, kind of what you're working with depending on the stretch of your fabric. Okay, so now we have all um, four parts of this top together. We have the back, sleeve, front, sleeve. And so we can sew on this um, neck band. So I'm gonna just stretch it as I sew, try to feel the stretch. I'm gonna use that little seam allowance that I left, I cut you know, left part of the original sweater so that I'm not sewing on this thicker um, knit. You can see how I left this little seam allowance. That's what I'm gonna try to sew onto so that this original collar stays kind of untouched. And then I'm going to stretch as I sew um, and get to the other side. So let's see how this works. I haven't ever, yeah, kept the original sweater neck band. I almost always just add a, coordinating knit fabric. And if you click the link in the description of this video, you can see some of my other sweater upcycling projects. And it looks fine, especially sometimes I'll add cuffs that are also, you know, that new fabric. And so then it looks like it's kind of clean. So this one though, I'm gonna try to reuse this sweater neck. I thought it would be you know, obviously it's the exact same yarn used, so it will look even more like it was meant to be and not dad's sweater cut up and reused. So let's see how this looks on there. Pretty fabulous, I would say. That is the old sweater neckline sewn back on this new project. And I did have quite a bit of extra here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off as we sew this last shoulder seam here, which will then put our project back into a circle and start forming the shirt. Okay, so I'm gonna sew up here on that neckline and then we'll have to go ahead and refinish that edge. Okay, so here's where I sew the neckline together. I think it looks pretty good, but we have this loose serger tail. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, sew or put that back inside the seam, if I can find my darning needle here. Um, you can also fold it over and like zigzag it um, back. And if you use the zigzag and not a serger and can just back stitch, that works too, okay? So this is because we can't back stitch on a serger. We have to make sure that we tuck these tails in. If I just cut them, then the whole thing can fray apart. So we don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck that tail in and then I can cut off that part. And now we have the finished neckline, which I think looks pretty great, okay? So no problem. If you think this bump is too big, you can always fold it over and that's where I say you can zigzag that down. But um, we don't usually have too many complaints. So now we need to finish Oh my goodness, so cute. Okay, so we need to work on finishing the rest of this top. So there's the neckline, front, the underarms of the sleeve are still open as well as the side seams are um, 
not sewn. So I'm gonna turn this inside out. And you can see here how I kept the original cuff and then the side seam gets cut starting here. So I'm gonna sew from this spot, grab that, sew down, and then sew down the side seam to um, enclose that part of the this tunic top, whatever it's going to end up to be. I'm not sure exactly, but the good news is that um, Rose is here today. So when we finish this, we can call her and get um, a little modeling done. And I saw that someone at the beginning asked if the kids like their sweatpants. And the answer is absolutely yes. Both of them, or all three of them, have worn them several times over the past week. So definitely been a huge hit. Rose is actually wearing hers today. Um, she put those on this morning. And even my middle schooler, um, says they fit great and he has worn them to school. So I take that as a huge win when he is wearing um, those. Okay, so let's turn this one right side out and just take a look at how. So this is gonna be a big sleeve and honest, uh, actually a big cuff because I left the original cuff on and this is a men's shirt. So we are knowing that this is gonna be a loose sleeve, but we did cut out some of the bulk, okay? That's why we re-sewed. So now we have this top, here's this. If we need to, we can always, you know, fold over this cuff a little bit if it's too long on the sleeve, but it's still gonna look really cute and just a fun sweater top. So, um, we, that's one side, so let's do the same thing with the other. So I'm gonna turn it with the right sides in and sew again from where I cut on the underside of the arm down under the armpit to the end at the bottom of the bodice part that I cut. And you can cut this top part as long or as short as you wanted. So like I said, my side seam is about four inches, but it kind of depends on where you want the waist to fall. Do you want it higher or lower um, for the placement? And if you're making this, obviously you don't want it to be a dress slash tunic, you can go ahead and just use the original band on the bottom here for the bottom of your sweater and then cut the front piece as the pattern indicates. And then you'd have a cute little raglan sweater that would be, um, look like a great sweater. Okay, so there's the top. Looks so, so cute. And I was gonna show you, so on this, because of how I cut it, the back, I don't know if it was the back or the front, this side ended up to be taller than this side. So I'm gonna make sure that goes in the back so that um, if it's a little bit longer, it's on the back side, okay? So we might have a slight high-low um, situation going. So, um, okay, so what we need to do is gather now this to fit the bottom of this before we sew it together. So I'm gonna slide over here to the sewing machine, okay? And I'm gonna run a, just a single. I'm gonna hope that I can just, I don't have to gather a whole bunch. So I'm just gonna run a single gathering stitch um, along the top of this, maybe about a quarter of an inch down. Um, so I've lengthened my stitch as long as it goes. And I'm gonna sew around the whole top of this Sweater. Remember, I've kept the original bottom hem, and so I'm hoping that will just be a nice finish on this. I've never really gathered a sweater before, um, so this is kind of an experiment and a new little upcycle, and I'm hoping um, will just be a cute sweater with a gathered bottom. Um, I think also too, because this is just, you know, a plain blue sweater, I was trying to add a little more style or frills for my daughter to make it seem 
a little bit more like a girl sweater, although this is a really pretty blue. And even though my husband was finished with it, the sweater is still in great shape. So after I cut the front and back of the shirt from this sweater fabric, I just evened up that top edge of what was left to um, have this bottom section left here. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I pull those tails nice and long so um, we can gather, okay? Come back over here. And um, so we'll lay this out. I'm gonna lay the front up. And this is what we're going to be attaching. This is where we're gonna be attaching the bottom to. So as I'm gathering, we're gonna go ahead and try and make it the same length as, um, or the same width as that. Okay, so um, I only did one gathering stitch, so I do have to be careful because if I break it, then we gotta start again. That is the advantage of running two stitches. But we're just gonna pull from one side, gather about half of it, and then we'll pull from the other side and um, gather the other half. Again, we don't have to gather a ton um, because this isn't like super tiny here. So I don't wanna over gather it either. And once I get it to the desired width, then I'm gonna go ahead and even out those gathers. So let me go ahead and actually check. Looks like we just need to pull it like another inch. And then we'll, okay. So that's probably actually good. And now we need to tie off these ends. And then we'll even out the gathers. So I'm gonna tie this together so it doesn't hopefully change in size while I'm sliding these around, okay? But now we want to even these out and make the gathers even. So we're going to um, keep the side seams approximately where the side seams were. And then remember I had one side that was a little bit longer, so we're gonna make sure we put that in the back. Okay, so once we get the gathers evened out, we will be pinning this right sides together to the sweater. So at this point, I'm gonna try and line up the side seams. Okay, so we'll line up the side seams here and then try and pin in between, keeping the gathers even. So just gonna put a few clips to keep everything where we want it. It's not super gathered, like I mentioned. Uh, the gathers are not tight, but we do want them to be even and kind of spaced out. Let's see, here's my clips. Okay, so now we'll do the front and then we sew this together and we're finished. So super fun and easy. I do love reusing adult clothes to make clothes for my kids. Plus it's special, you know, they know they're wearing something that their dad wore, has worn. Um, so I love doing that. Okay, so we have right sides together and then we'll see how long this ends up to be. Is it gonna be a dress? Is it gonna be a tunic? I don't know exactly how long it is. So I always like to sew with the gathering side up so that I can make sure I keep my gathers even. Like right here I can see, okay, that gather was like folded over and I don't want that folded under. And then I also wanna try and make sure as I'm sewing that I'm catching both layers and I like to stitch over that gathering stitch because then I know that you won't see it when the project is finished. So 
that those are two reasons why I like to sew with the gathers up, but um, other people might have a different preference. Okay, but I am able to just make sure I think that things are lined up nicely when I do that. Hopefully, keeping these layers of sweater lined up. If we have any weird holes, we'll have to go back and fix it, but hopefully not. But we'll take a quick look here and make sure that it sewed together. So I think that looks very, very cute. Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, so uh, how adorable is that? I probably could have made the waist even a little bit higher, but I think it'll look super cute. So um, let's call Rose and see what it looks like. Hey, Rosie, time to try on your dress. Come here. Who interrupts your fun? It's me. Okay, so Rose is also wearing two things that we made before, the sweater with the pockets in the shoulder and then back step. And then she's wearing her sweatpants from yesterday with the pockets, Can you, or from last week with the pockets. Can you show off the pockets on, the sweat, on the, your pants? I know, so cute. Okay, so we're gonna put this sweater over sweatpants for today um for a little look so well I, that probably would not be how we would style it but that's how we're going to style it um for today's show off so i'm just going to swing the camera this way so we can do a little change a here change, change. Hey, hey 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 what minute i know but please don't take a long time take it off I will help you put it back on later. Ah. Okay. So this, let's see how that long Dad. it is from Dad's sweater. Come here. Don't come up. It looks so cute. Come here. Ugh. It smells. It smells. What? Does it smell like Dad? No. <laughs> I really don't like the smell. Oh, oh my goodness. You're being weird. so silly. Well, it feels weird over sweatpants, but I think it'd be so cute over leggings. Okay, so we're back. All right, come back. No, come on out. <laughs> come on out. Ta da! Oh, come over here. I'm done. No, come over here. Okay, so definitely not a, a dress length, more of a tunic length. Step out over here a little bit more. Okay, but it looks cute. The bottom looks cute. Hold your arms out. The arms look good. I did roll up the cuffs, um, just one little roll, um, but then she can actually wear it as her arms get longer and it can just be shorter as a top when she finishes. So um, can you take a couple steps closer? Because you're getting farther away, not closer. So, um, all right, as she drifts away into the distance, come back. Okay, stop right there. That's a good one. So they can see that it looks, okay, have, give us a spin. Give us a spin. Or, yeah. <laughs> Looks great all around. So cute. Um, <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> okay, so there we go. Another idea for reusing sweaters, or even you could do this same idea with like a long sleeve t shirt. Um, to create a little dress or a tunic 
for your daughter. And again, as your kids get as your kids get bigger, you can't necessarily upcycle um, unless you're using really large adult sizes. But this is a men's large sweater that easily is turned into a size eight um, raglan top. The sleeves are long enough. The top was wide enough, and I had enough um, fabric to then add this little um, gather on the bottom too. So. Cute upcycle, will look great with no leggings. Pockets. No pockets. No, well, I'll have to add that next time. But this would look so cute with leggings. Maybe you can wear it to school tomorrow. It's okay. Can we turn you like it? Okay. Now. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for joining me. I will um, be doing another hopefully fun project next week, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.